Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So I'm going to be showing you how to make this wreath card. Now I made this during a recent Facebook Live and this one's actually going to be, for me, I'm going to keep this displayed in my craft room. So I've made this as an 8x8 size, but you can make this any size you want and the one I'm going to do today is actually going to be 6x6. But I've created this crafty wreath using all these really lovely stamps which I'll show you in a moment. And I've added glossy accents, I've coloured them using the Black Widow coloured pencils and then this one just stands up and it will fold flat and it will go into an 8x8 envelope. I've added a stopper on this one just because I did put you know, a bit of weight on this. You've got real buttons on here as well and it was just kind of falling open but I also do that when I make a rocker card. But if you do want to write anything you have this space on the back and again we'll talk about that when I start to make the 6x6 version but it's really nice and it sits really lovely in my craft room so let me show you how I've done it. Okay, so like I said, this is going to be a 6x6 six six size, so I already put together this one, so I'm probably going to make two today. I'll decorate this one whilst I, de I decorate the other one. But again, you can see there, now if it, if it, when you decorate it, it does hold itself okay with the weight, then you can just open it like a normal card and you can write a message, you know, in this space here. But that's how it's going to look. So what you need is a piece of 6x6 six six card, which I've got here, and I've just scored along the middle here at 3 inches right down there and just fold it in half. So you have, that's the base. We're now going to cut into this. So I have here this circle and I also have my circle cutter. Okay, so I've just got my mat there. So what I wanna do first of all is cut a five and a half diameter circle. So if you've got circle dies that are that size or you may have a side plate, it's entirely up to you. I'm using my circle cutter here. So I've just set it to five and a half. I'll just take the cap off there and then I'm just going to lay this down, just kind of hover the blade to make sure it's going to cut where I need it. And then just push that blade down and it will cut. I know lots of you have this, it's a really handy gadget. You'll see now I've got that circle. Then I have this circle die here which I'm going to sit in the middle and all I'm doing is I'm creating this frame. So the frame can be as thick as you want, it can be whatever size you want. I know some people have worked as well have started sharing these on our Facebook group and they've made them into uh, just the wreath. So they've literally just done this piece, they've not attached it to the card, popped some ribbon around the top and had it hanging. So you know you could send it as a nice little decorative gift as well. So this circle here is four inches. So I'm just placing that in the middle there and I'm just going to run that through my die cutting machine. Okay, so there's the ring. It's slightly thicker there, a little bit thinner there, but it really isn't going to matter. Now, using that same size that you've just cut in the middle there, you want to sit it on here. Now, it's up to you how high up you go or how low. Now, if you want it to fit in a 6x6 envelope, then I would, I'm laying this down on my grid. I can see it's one, two, three inches there. So I can take this circle up to about I'd say there because by the time you stick things on they're going to overhang. You can see it's still within that 6x6 six six section. So I'm just going to bring that over about there. I think that's okay. Depending on what die cutting machine you have you may not cut through both layers. This is a 300 GSM cardstock so some of the dies do cut all the way through but what it will do is leave a imprint or like an embossed area and then you can just cut around that with your scissors if it is still attached on the second layer. It will cut through the top so I'm just going to run that one through. Okay, so you can see now, if I just open it up here, so you can see it's cut through the front one and it is almost cut through the bottom one. So what I'm just going to do is take my scissors and I'm just going to just finish it off here. It's very easy to cut through. It's literally just holding on by a thread. But you might also, if you've got the circle cutter, just cut a slightly smaller reduce your size down here and then just cut a smaller circle inside. And then what you can do, just fold that back again, is I'm going to grab some of my Kalal glue and then all you want to do is just add a bead of glue just along that half and then it doesn't really matter, I'm going to stick the slightly thinner part actually towards the bottom and just line up the, the inner ring with the outer shape here. So now you have your wreath card and it will stand up. I mean, there's, you know, there's nothing on this at the moment, but I am just gonna reinforce those score lines. So I'm just going to burnish them again. And like I said, if once you start adding stuff on, you do feel you need to add a little stopper, I'll give you the measurements for that once we get to it. So 
Now I can start decorating. So I have already gone and stamped and coloured all of these pieces. And they come from the latest issue of Creative Stamping Magazines. This is issue 91. This is actually a card that I made for the magazine and it made it onto the front cover, which I was super pleased with. But that's where my inspirations come from. I wanted to continue this into this you know, effect. So if you prefer this style, it's the same half. That's a three by six or a piece of six by six scored. And then I just added a piece of acetate behind this matte layer and then build it up. But all of the, the instructions are inside there along with I think four other cards I've made as well using the stamp set for inspiration. But it's lovely. But because I had to send these and give them to obviously the magazine to be photographed, I didn't have it for myself so I wanted to recreate it again. But this is the stamp set here. Now you also get an embossing folder as well which will go with this top right hand section which is actually the Sarah Davis Signature Collection by Crafters Companion. So she's got them also with an embossing folder and then all of this here is your crafting with friends and it's so nice. This is meant to be <laughs> written this way because the idea is, is that you can spell create, you can spell craft and you can also spell crafter. You could also have eat because you do have food related things on here. So that's why they have it like that because you can jumble it up and make other words if you want. But there's some really lovely images here. You've got your stamping platform, your die cutting machine, your pen pot, all your different inks, your palettes, even the little ink pads here as well. And there's some really nice sentiments there as well. So I'm probably gonna use the maker's gonna make because I've already stamped that there. And um, we'll see where we go. But you've also got you bring colour to my world. Colour makes life a little bit brighter. I like you more than crafting and that's a lot. There's just some great ones on there. So I will link that in the description box below. What I did do earlier is I took a photo of the layout that I already done because I was playing around with this. So I'm going to follow that. I'm going to pop the video on high speed with a little bit of music in the background so you can just sit back and relax and I'll be back when I've completed the card and if I can I might do this one at the same time as well. that's everything now stuck down I think it looks really cool I'm going to add some Nuva drops and glossy accents but I did use a lot on this so this is the other one that you would have seen me start to place things down I really like it I'm going to take a photo of that but I'm going to do another maybe the palette here and I also would like to do some more like the little jars and some flowers and um, finish that one off and then I'll pop the maker's going to make and then in this one here I'm going to have the same maker's going to make and I've stamped it on this piece of cardstock. I'm just going to cut a little bit closer and then I've just got this is the two inch circle punch. I've had this for years. I got this from Hobbycraft but there's lots of companies that sell them. I'm just going to line that up and then what I have here is a piece of half an inch by five inch acetate or window sheet and I've popped some red tape along the back and then flip it over and I'm going to have it so it goes across the centre like so and then I've popped some tape on the back of this one 
And if you want to tidy it up on the back, you could cut another ring and stick that over. And you could cut another one of these and stick it on the back so you don't see any of the tape. But now I can have that so it's in the centre. I think that looks looks about right. And one of the tapes hanging over the edge. Get rid of any blue strings there. There we go. So you've got that floating sign in the middle there as well. So I'm just going to pop that to one side, tidy this all up and then we'll finish off with the Nouveau Drops and the glossy accents. Okay, so before I do the glossy accents, actually you want that to be the very last thing, but I've decided I'm gonna add the stopper because when this one, I mean, this is a shiny surface, you know, not everybody's is gonna be smooth like that, so it will probably hold, but you can see that's something just on my, there we go. <laughs> It was catching on a bit of glue there, I think, but you can see it just falls flat. So what you will want to do is just get yourself a bit of cardstock. Don't worry if you don't have a scoreboard for this because you can use your ruler and then just fold it. But you want a piece of three and a half by one inch and I'm going to score at half an inch and three. So you've got that half inch piece on each end. And then I'm going to score at halfway as well, which will be one and three quarters. Okay. And then all you want to do is burnish the outer two so they're mountains and then that middle score line will become a valley or it depends how you look at it because now they're valleys that's a mountain but if I hold it that way that's the shape you want and then I'm just going to grab I use the quick dry glue here so I'm going to open this up apply the glue just on one of the tabs and stick it in the middle of the inside section, like so. So if I just hold that up, you can see. So you've got the fold facing the bottom here. And then again, you wanna add glue to the other tab. Fold the whole thing down so the tab's facing up and close the card, like so. I think I'm gonna cut another ring off camera and just punch another circle there just to tidy that up on the back realise I've got some pencil there where I obviously use the back of the card stock so I could probably rub that out as well but now the card will open it will only open that far so it will stand up and it won't fall open so next I've got my glossy accents here and I'm just going to add some shine over maybe like some of the dials on the sewing machine on the glass jars and then I'm going to add the oh and on the paint splats as well on the palette there and then I'm going to add some Nouveau colours to the centre of the flowers. Okay so there is the finished card, if I just bring that up a bit closer, the glossy accents you can see shining there on the jars on the paint palette, it looks really nice, and they've even put it on the paint brushes. And I've just put a little blob of the Nouveau drops, different colours in the centres of the flowers there. And I just think it's come together really nicely. So I'll bring in the larger one just so you can see the difference in size. So yeah, I just think it's really nice. If you've got your own crafty space and you want to have something nice, I also think I may end up putting this into a shadow box frame which I think would be really nice as well. So yeah, a couple of ideas for you, the eight by eight or the six by six. So I'm gonna finish off that other six by six and these will be sent out to my crafty friends and this one I'm gonna enjoy in my craft room. So as always, I'll link the items that I've used today in the description box below and I'll be back very soon with another tutorial. Thanks for watching, bye.